Today I'm going to show the unboxing and assembly of the Faraday cage tester. So you'll receive a box like this and if you open it up you'll find several things inside. First you'll find a set of instructions which will have detailed step-by-step -step information about how to assemble the unit and how to operate the unit. But it's important to understand that um, there are also videos available for all of that. On the back of the sheet there's also some settings that are shown uh, for the attenuator that goes inside of this Faraday cage tester and how you set them for different levels of shielding that you're trying to test to. Again, all that's covered in a video which is a little bit easier to understand than just reading a paper. But there'll be a, a piece of paper in there that documents how to assemble it and operate the unit. And there'll be several components. Um, one of them is this button box attenuator. So if you open it up here, what you'll see is that there's a, a unit in here that has um, buttons on them. And the buttons are selected for different levels of attenuation. And I talk about in the instructions how you use that. And so we'll look at that when we assemble the unit. All right, so there's the button box attenuator. There's a set of radios, which are these Baofeng BF888S radios, two-way radios, good quality radios. Um, so there'll be a set of those. Those come with chargers and everything in them as well. Then there is a, an enclosure. Um, it's a very high quality RF enclosure. has a conductive gasket in it. Um, so I went through a lot of different enclosures to find this one, but it's, uh, you'll get an enclosure. And then finally, there will be a set of some hardware, some little connectors, SMA connectors. There's a total of seven pieces, and we'll show how to use those during the assembly. And then the last thing is just a sticker that you can put on the, the cover of the box that just says Faraday Cage Tester. All right, so those are the components that will come uh, with the unit. And next, I'm going to show how they're assembled into the Faraday Cage Tester. Got everything unpacked. Go ahead and take out the radios and put them in their respective chargers and plug the chargers in so we can get the radios charged up. Now, don't bother installing the antennas. We're not going to use the radio antennas for this application. Uh, they're simply, they provide too much gain for our system to work properly. All right, so we'll build up something a little bit different for that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention to the box. Now, I put my sticker on first thing just so that I have it out of the way. And then if you look at the instruction page, there's a little box down in the lower right-hand corner and this shows the drilling template that we're going to use for one end of the box. So you're going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to carefully cut out this box and you're going to punch the hole out where the uh, antenna port is going to go. All right, so you're going to cut that box out very carefully and punch that hole. Okay, once you have that, you'll have a little template that looks something like this. Okay, and that little template will be used to drill a hole in one end of the box. It really doesn't matter which end. Um, we're going to use the top end here, just the way the sticker's on it here. And what you do is you, you take the, the template and you line it up on the end of the box and you mark the spot where the hole is and you use a one quarter inch drill to drill that hole. All right. Now you have to be pretty careful about this. Make sure you've cut the template carefully and that you line it up carefully on the box and that when you drill it, you drill it carefully. Okay. And you get a nice hole there. We're going to use that for mounting the antenna to the outside of the box, all right? So you're gonna go ahead and get that, that one quarter inch drill hole done, all right? Now, if you open up the box inside here, what you'll see is that it's got a rubber gasket and it's got a metal gasket in it as well. And there's a packet of four screws, um, I'm sorry, six screws that come with it that will hold the lid on uh, once we get it fully assembled, all right? So we'll set those aside for right now. We don't need those quite yet. All right, so once you have the hole drilled in one end of the box, again, the other end does not have a hole in it, you're going to go ahead and install this button box attenuator. All right, so you just take off these little black plastic caps. And what you'll notice on the bottom is there's one side that says in and one side that says out. You're going to take the inside and go through the hole from the inside. Okay, so it's going to just look like that. And then you're going to take one of these, there's seven SMA connectors, you're going to take one of the what I call the bullet ones. They just have two straight threaded parts here. And you're going to attach it to the end of that button box attenuator. All right, and you're going to get that nice and snug. And you can use a little wrench if you want to tighten this one on. This one's not going to come off, OK? And when you get done with that, the attenuator will be held in place um, by that little SMA connector barrel there, OK? So that's the next step is to mount the button box attenuator. 
Okay, next we're going to build up a little piece with three of these SMA connectors. We're going to take the two 90 degree ones and one more of these barrels and we're going to connect them. So the barrel is just going to go on each of the threaded parts. So this one goes here and then the other end of the barrel goes on this threaded part here. All right. So they just screw together and you just sort of form a little, a little shape like this. Okay, now everything's just finger tight. It doesn't have to be real tight right now because we're actually going to move it around a little bit when we put it in. All right, so you're going to build up that piece and we'll set that aside. All right, next step is going to be to take these two threaded SMAs. They just have threads on both ends and to screw them in the antenna ports of the two radios. All right, we put one in that radio and we put one in this radio. Okay, so one of these radios is going to go inside the box. It's going to be the receive radio, and the other radio is going to be outside the box. It's going to be the transmit radio. So if we let this be the transmit radio, we're going to attach the last SMA connector, it's another barrel, onto this threaded SMA connector. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and attach that there, and we end up with a little stub antenna on the transmit radio, and that's what we want. Okay, so the receive side just has the threaded end. The transmit side has the threaded and then one of these barrel connectors. Okay, now we're going to take this piece that we built up a minute ago and we're going to install it on the output end of this button box attenuator. So we're just going to screw it to that end right there, okay? Just threads on there and we'll let the other piece just kind of come up toward the top like that, all right? Next, the receive radio is going to get attached to this other end of this little connector here. So all we're going to do is put the threaded end up against this other SMA connector and screw them together here. Again, we're just doing this finger tight for right now, nothing real tight. And it's going to be, the system's going to look like this, all right? The radio is attached to the button box attenuator through that little assembly. And then what you do is you fold the radio over and you set it down into the channel like that, all right? That's how it all kind of comes together. Once it's in there, then you go back and you tighten these, all these SMA connectors in here so that they're all at least good and finger tight. Okay, they don't have to be tightened with a wrench for what you're doing, just good and finger tight. And you end up with a system that looks like that. Okay, so we're just about finished. What we want to do now when we get ready to use it is we're going to turn the radio on. We can just reach in here and turn it on. It'll tell you that it turns on and it'll tell you the channel number. So I just set this one to channel one. We just want to make sure both radios are to the same channel. And then you'll turn on the transmit radio as well. Power on. One. So again, we want it to be the same channel, channel one in this case, so that the radios can talk. And if you push one radio, the other one, you can talk into this one, you can hear it out of the other radio, okay? Now, when we actually go to use the unit, we turn the volume of this receive radio all the way up, okay? So it's gonna be really loud if I turn this on. You can hear it uh, connecting there. And so it's, but you want it really loud because we're going to put the lid on it and you want to be able to hear when the radio turns on and off. All right. So again, what we did is we assembled this receive unit. We put in the button box attenuator. We put the little barrel connector on the top. We built up this little assembly here. We attached one end to the button box attenuator, one end to the radio. We folded the radio in there. We turned it on, made sure it was set to channel one. Okay. All right, once your unit is fully assembled, the last step is going to be to just take one of the two antennas and attach it to the outside of the box. All right. Now, as I said, we won't take the antennas and attach them directly to the radios because it's just too much gain in the system. Instead, we'll attach it to one end of the attenuator, which will then attenuate the signal before it gets to the radio. For the transmit side, we will not attach a full-size antenna. We'll just leave this little stub on here uh, when we do our tests. Okay. The last thing you do before you put the lid on is you set the button box attenuator value. Now, the value you put on the button box is the value that you're trying to test your Faraday cage to. So let's say you want to know if your Faraday cage has 50 dB of shielding. You set the button box attenuator to 50. So all of the buttons start off as being pressed in and you remove 50. So I take two 20s out, an eight and a two, that adds up to 50. And that would be testing for 50 dB. When I put the lid on and then I run my test, which I'll talk about in a minute, it would tell me if I have 50 dB or more of shielding. 
All right, what if you didn't want 50? What if you only wanted to test for 30 dB? You, again, you start with all of the buttons in and you remove 30. So you take 20 off and an eight off and a two off, that's 30. Then you put the lid on and you're ready to run your test to see if it has 30 dB, all right? Now I have a sheet here with, with several button box configurations already drawn out on it in case you get confused. But the simple way of doing it is just start off with all of the buttons pressed and remove the amount that you want to check your Faraday cage to. All right? If you want to know if it has 60, take off 60 and then run your test and see if it works or not. All right. And I'll show how that test is done uh, in a separate video. All right. So that's how it's all built up. Radios are turned on. It's fully ready to go. The last thing you do before you ran a test is you go ahead and put on the lid. You take these six screws that came with it and you put them in nice and snug to hold the box together, okay? Now be careful with the screws. Try not to strip the heads or anything like that because you're likely to take them on and off many times as you change those button box settings, okay? But you do need them nice and snug. You need the box to be nice and sealed when you run these tests. And when you get done, that's what it'll look like. It'll look like a box all sealed up with an antenna coming out of it, okay? The other side is this transmit radio, and then we'll go through the testing of how that's actually done to determine the shielding of your particular Faraday cage.